Legend has it that there was a bird that burst into flames, and all that's left are ashes. From those ashes, a new bird comes out, and it's the same exact bird that burst into flames before, a phoenix. Why am I talking about phoenixes? Because throughout my talk, I hope to relate it to how, it, how to deal with the loss of a loved one, and how that relates with how a phoenix undergoes stages like that too. This is my story, and I'm the phoenix. Around May 2003, my grandfather was admitted for a heart bypass surgery in um, the hospital, and my mom was also admitted because she was going to give birth to me, and I'm a wonderful person. So, I was going to be born soon. But my grandfather, right before he entered the OR, he told my mom that if he doesn't make it out alive, uh, that it was her duty to um, make his memory alive and not have me grow up without the thought of a grandfather. He did survive the surgery, but the doctors told him that he really didn't have, he had maybe three years to live. Ten years later, on the midnight of May 2nd, 2013, I woke up to the sound of sobbing, crying, and my house was chaos. My mom was frantically throwing clothes into the suitcase. My dad was hastily booking tickets to go to India. And I just learned that my grandfather had passed due to cardiac arrest. Um, first, I was, only, I was only nine years old, and it just felt like a nightmare. I didn't really, I couldn't process anything that was going on, so I just, I didn't believe any of it. But when I landed in India the very next day, the entire experience just was enhanced for me and it was real. And I realized that I just lost one of the persons, per, one of the people in my life who made a very big impact. This is the stage where the bird has burst, not the bird, the phoenix has burst into flames and it symbolizes death. My grandfather was very special to me. Um, after he died, all I wanted was one more chance to make him a cup of orange juice because I knew I'd never give it to him because of his uh, kidney problems. I couldn't give him water. All I wanted was one more chance for him to drive me to school. All I wanted was one more chance for him to buy me a chocolate bar from that favorite candy store across the street. All I wanted was one more chance to hear his voice call my name. I was very close with him. He supported me in any of my endeavors, and mostly, even when I was wrong, he backed me up, which is why I felt very special. In, I always knew that in my grandfather's heart, I had a special place because I was his only granddaughter. So it really hurt when I found out that he passed, especially because it, he passed six days before my 10th birthday, and. My 10th birthday was a big milestone. I was a tween, and finding out that I was going to celebrate my 10th birthday in sadness and not really be able to embrace it, it hurt me a lot. This is the stage where the phoenix bursts into flames, and all that's left are ashes. Those ashes represent the pain, the darkness, the despair, the anger, the frustration that I felt. However, I quickly realized that if I was just going to stay in that dark place, it would literally be no good for me. One thing I did manage to learn and I took away from his death was that I have to be careful about my health. My grandfather was a living example of what not to be. He had so many problems. He had heart problems. He had diabetes. He had obesity. He was just a living example of what I should not turn out to be. So, uh, which is why I took one good positive thing away from his death. The other thing I decided from his death was my career path in medicine. I, I saw my grandfather struggle not to get uh, the best. He struggled a lot because he didn't get the best possible care that he could in India. Some of the doctors were very corrupt and they didn't give the best treatment that he could have gotten. And that just made me realize that why not? Why can't I be a doctor? Why can't I wanna, I wanna, that basically 
forced me to realize that this is what I want in my life. I want to give patients the proper care. And it sort of became my motivating factor. If I hadn't found a way to move on from that death, I literally would have lost the best part of me. And that was my cheeriness, my enthusiasm, and my bright personality. My best friend, who's standing right over there, she's going to give her talk next. She used to describe me in fourth grade as a hyperactive bubble. Because all I would do is I would just go around and try to do anything I can to make people smile. So if, since this loss was very early on in my life, if I just stood there and like not learn to move on from that death, I would have lost that very best part of me. And I would literally not make her day anymore. This is the stage where the same phoenix is growing away from those ashes. It's the same phoenix, but the only thing is, it's growing from that pain and it's using it as a motivating factor. Loss should be the reason that that person goes off the rails or never learns to cope. Change is very overwhelming. And especially after someone's death, it could ruin everything good for you, but you shouldn't let it. You have to learn to recuperate from it. Instead of wallowing in that dark place, use that pain, use that anger, use that sadness, use that despair, use that frustration, and use any of those feelings that you get when you face the loss of a, death, of a loved one, and use it to propel you. Put it into something. Ask yourself what that loved one would have done, and keep their memory alive in your heart, and beating in your heart. Grow from that loss, and don't let it change you for the worse. That's the most important thing. And don't let it sink you. Rise up from those ashes and be strong.